Hey guys, Marcus Kakin here uh, from Blindside Football, here to give you my Week 12 GPP and tournament plays. Uh, starting off at quarterback, um, my favorite quarterback play of this week, uh, you know, everybody's on Brian Hoyer, and there's kind of some obvious reasons for that. But my pivot from Brian Hoyer is Josh McCown. Josh McCown, similar situation to Brian Hoyer, similar price points, which is going to keep a lot of people off of him. But uh, McCown has been good when he started. At least two touchdowns in every game he started and finished, except for the game against the Rams. The Rams do have good cornerbacks, so you got to kind of let that go a little bit. But going up against the Ravens, and only uh, the, New the New Orleans Saints have allowed more fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, so you got to like that matchup. Um, McCown obviously playing very, very well, and he's going to make for a great Monday night hammer. I kind of like, you know, it's kind of exciting just to watch your guy on Monday night, watch him climb up the leaderboard and everything. I'm not saying that's why you go after guys like this, but... Excellent matchup, great pivot from Brian Hoyer. Still going to give you that salary um, relief that you need to pick up some of, some of the other guys. Uh, a guy that I have in a lot of my GPP plays. Um, another one, Derek Carr. Um, had a really bad game last week, and uh, because of that, a lot of people are off of him. Just 3.2% owned in the FanDuel uh, tournaments on Thursday night. But this is a guy up until then that had like three or four games in a row where he was getting over 300 yards, multiple touchdowns in every game. Going up against Tennessee, which has been a pretty good matchup um, this season to kind of target against. And one of the things I like doing, especially when I'm picking my quarterbacks, is picking a quarterback with a bad defense. In this case, the Raiders. Um, you know, if you think Marcus Mariota and company are going to put points on the board against this terrible Raiders defense, then uh, that means the Raiders are going to have to kind of play catch up and kind of put points on the board to stay in competition here and have a little bit of a shootout. And we've seen that a lot from the Raiders this year. So uh, Derek Carr, one of my quarterback, uh, quarterback plays this week. Uh, switching over to running back, my favorite running back this week, uh, assuming Charkandrick West is out, is Spencer Ware. I am all over this guy. Uh, absolutely love him this week. Uh, the Chiefs are heavily favored at home by over a touchdown, so you've got to like that. You know, maybe a lot of grinding him out in the second half, especially, like I said, if West is out uh, because they don't have a lot of other running back options uh, left. Um, but then beyond all that, 77% of the touchdowns scored this season by the Chiefs have been by a Chiefs running back. Whether it be running the ball in the end zone or receiving it, 77% um, of all their touchdowns. Uh, I believe the Chiefs are at a 22 or 23 implied biggest point total. So you've got to expect where to get in the end zone at least once, maybe even twice. But at a salary at $3,800 on DraftKings, that is excellent value. I am all over him for my GPPs. Makes for a great pivot from those other guys like the Thomas Rawls of the world. Another great pivot from Thomas Rawls, uh, who was highly owned in the Thursday night uh, competitions, um, is uh, Alfred Blue. Uh, everybody expects the Saints-Texans game to be high scoring. Everybody is on DeAndre Hopkins, so I think this makes for a great contrarian play because everybody expects Hopkins to get the touchdowns, and that may not necessarily happen. Hopkins may catch the ball and be down at the two, down at the five, maybe even a pass interference call in the end zone, which is going to set up an Alfred Blue touchdown. Uh, like I said, this game's going to be high scoring. Blue may see the end zone once, maybe twice, and he's going to be really low owned because other people are targeting the Rawls and the TJ Yeldons and those kind of guys. So Alfred Blue, a guy that I like, great contrarian play. Wide receiver, uh, let's go over to Brandon Cooks over in uh, New Orleans. You know, we all believe that their defense is terrible. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying about Derek Carr. If their defense is terrible, they're going to have to do things to put points on the board. And Brandon Cooks has been heavily involved in their uh, offense these last few weeks going into their bye. Lots of receptions, lots of touchdowns, lots of red zone targets. So if you expect this game to be kind of a high shootout game, like I think it's going to be because of the bad defense, uh, Brandon Cooks is a guy that I, I really like for GPPs. Uh, Vincent Jackson over in Tampa Bay. Um, obviously, Mike Evans has done an amazing job these last few weeks, but... He's going to get the Vontae Davis treatment, which should mean more targets going over to Vincent Jackson. Um, Vincent Jackson is going to be on Greg Toller. Um, always love targeting Greg Toller for my GPPs, but uh, Vincent Jackson should see a lot of targets. Uh, got in the end zone last week and uh, is just really under-owned this week. Just 4% owned in the FanDuel uh, tournaments on Thursday night. Uh, a great low-priced low uh, wide receiver option this week. And uh, another great low-priced wide receiver option. Michael Floyd didn't play last week because of the injury, currently questionable, which may have kept his ownership percentage down on Thursday night FanDuel, uh, just half a percent owned, which is crazy for a guy that's found the end zone in four consecutive games he's played in. 
uh, back-to-back 100-yard games um, in the last two games that he's played in. So half a percent owned, lots of great things going on there. Against the 49ers, who are terrible against the pass, uh, I think right now the Cardinals have a 28-point implied Vegas point total. So they're going to put points on the board. And uh, Michael Floyd, I think, going to find that end zone yet again here. Uh, tight ends, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, tight end, I'm probably going to go pretty chalky this week. It's going to be the, you know, the Delaney Walkers, the Jordan Reeds, the Gary Barnages. It's probably going to be those guys for me, but if I'm going to kind of change things up and take a lower own guy, I'm looking at guys like Jimmy Graham. Uh, like I said, I think Thomas Rawls, really, really chalky, so I'm trying to pivot off of him. It is a really tough matchup for him against the Steelers, tougher than I think most people realize. And uh, the Seahawks do, a, do have a high implied biggest point total. And uh, I really, I'm not a believer in guys like Tyler Lockett. So if they're going to throw the ball into the end zone, I think Jimmy Graham's going to get involved here. Um, really low owned, really cheap across all sites right now. Um, I don't think he's ever been this cheap, ever. Um, so throw him in a couple GPPs. I think he could find the end zone this week. Um, another guy that I think could find the end zone this week. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what you're looking for out of these tight ends. You're looking for a low price tight end. They're highly volatile. You're just looking for that touchdown. But... Julius Thomas, uh, really like him again this week. I think Blake Bortles gets back on track this week. And Julius Thomas has seen a red zone target in almost every game he's played in this year. Um, so a great candidate for a touchdown again this week. Um, really high upside, really low floor too. But again, that's why these guys are tournament plays. Uh, going over to defense, um, obviously the high owned defense of the week so far is, is the Cardinals. They were over 20% owned on Thursday night. And uh, they have good reason to, but... They are the road team, and, God, it feels weird to say, but Blaine Gabbert looked all right last week. Um, you know, kind of made the Seahawks defense not as good as you would have expected. I think they only had six fantasy points. You expected more out of them. So this week, I'm actually pivoting over to uh, the Bengals. Uh, I like the Bengals a lot. They're at home. They're favored big at home by more than a touchdown. They're going up against the Rams, who, frankly, I don't even think they know who their quarterback's going to be this weekend yet. Um, that's how bad they've been. But uh, so you got, you know, kind of that confusion at quarterback, a bad offense. The Rams have allowed at least 10 fantasy points to opposing defenses um, over the last two weeks. Um, I just like the situation for the Bengals. I think they make for a great pivot from the Cardinals and uh, should put up some nice points this weekend. Don't forget to check out the website, guys, blindsidefootball.com. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and uh, good luck this week.